particles like these so fast and cool. Bombs out of mechanics and pipe up some cold words But no one can deny the fact that quantum theory works I'm going to start this video talking about how a semiconductor works, or recapping how a semiconductor works. And if you remember, I said that the semiconductor has two ways of conducting electricity. Either one of its electrons will, in the valence shell, will gain enough energy and move from the valence shell, which is at the moment, into the conduction shell, and thereby become a conduction electron. Right? So that was one possible way that these, so this electron used to be here, moved into the conduction shell, and now can conduct electricity. And also, once it does that, once it jumps into the conduction shell, it also leaves behind a positive hole. So this is where the actual electron used to be. Now there's a positive region in the lattice, because this area is slightly, slightly more positive, because of lack of electrons. What that means is that, for example, the neighboring electron, for example this one here, will jump in that positive hole and take over that position where the electron used to be. And that means that this position is now taken by a positive hole because there's no more electron here. So that means the positive holes move in this direction and the valence electron in that same lattice is moving in the opposite direction. And these are the two ways that a semiconductor can conduct electricity, either through conduction electrons, which have gained enough energy to jump the conduction shell, or through positive holes. The positive holes travel the opposite direction of your electrons but these positive holes help the valence electrons conduct electricity. Right, if this is a semiconductor, this is what we call an intrinsic semiconductor. And what that means is that the actual properties of the semiconductor, only the semiconductor, nothing, nothing else that we add, help it to conduct electricity. But there's something we can actually add to make it a bit different or to change it up a bit. That's what this dot point is all about. It says, describe how doping a semiconductor can change its electrical properties. Just now we talked about the intrinsic semiconductor, which is just purely silicon. Now we're talking about the extrinsic se semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductor. And that's when we add something to it. So we have not just silicon or germanium, but something else as well. Right, and there's two different types we need to know about, the P-type and the N-type. And for example, the P-type, in the case of the P, what the P stands for, or what you can view it to stand for. So P stands for conduction via positive holes. So P type semiconductor will have extra conduction potential because they're going to have a few more extra positive holes. And the reason why is because we add any group 3 element into the actual structure. So a group 3 element example would be boron. So this is boron. And a group 3 element means that it will have 3 electron in its outer shell. That's a group 3 electron. So, for example, this is the structure of the lattice, and you can see here we've added one, two, boron, the group three element, into its structure. And what does it do? Well, boron has three actual electrons. Silicon has four. So beforehand, we had four bonds. So each silicon would have had four bonds, and they would have shared with the neighboring silicon. But now we have boron only having three bonds. Right, so this is the, these are the ones from boron. You can see here there is a gap. This is usually, there used to be a sharing happening here, but nothing is being shared there at the moment. So what actually is there instead is a positive hole. So whenever there's a boron, there's an extra positive hole where there used to be an electron being shared between the silicons. Right? So the more boron we have, the more positive holes. And these positive holes, remember, they can also help carry current or carry electrons because now these electrons will be jumping into actual, so for example, this electron might jump into the hole, and then this keeps moving and um, current's being carried. So in this case, a p-type semiconductor, by adding a group 3 element, we create more positive holes, and this is how we can actually make a band structure look for, this is a band structure of a p-type semiconductor. We have normal lens band, and the conduction electrons, so the conduction band, and we have between the valence band and the conduction band, it's almost inside the, the energy gap, we have these extra positive holes. So the, the more of these we have, the more electricity will be carried. Right, so a piece type semiconductor will add more positive holes in the lattice, which means we can carry more current that way, whereas the N type semiconductor, N standing for conduction via negative electrons, that's when we add a group 5 element, 
an example would be phosphorus, right? Phosphorus is a group 5 element. Group 5 element means it has 5 valence electrons. So a group 3 had, had 3, group 5 has 5 valence electrons. So what does it do when we add a couple of phosphorus, for example, into the structure? Because phosphorus has 5 electrons, that means that if they make bonds with the neighboring silicons, but now we have two being shared here, two being shared here, two being shared here, and two being shared here. Right, so now this, everyone here is happy. They have all their eight electrons, but there is an extra electron. So you can see this one here is the extra electron, which means in this case, what's going to happen to the extra electron is it's really quickly going to move into the conduction band. Right, so this electron will move, and it will be taking its space in the conduction band, more or less. It's not. It's almost in conduction band, not quite, but you can almost count these extra electrons, this one here, and this one is also extra for the phosphorus here. You can almost count them like conduction electrons. They have very similar energy levels, which means they can conduct electricity as well once they're there. They can just move with the current, and that's how an n-type semiconductor adds more capabilities, more electrical properties to the actual conductor. The valence band for a n-type semiconductor looks a bit like this. Again, you got your valence band on the bottom. You got your semiconductor, uh, sorry, your conduction band on the top. And you can see these extra electrons. They are slightly below the conduction band. They're here, the extra electrons. But they have high amounts of energy. And these energy levels allow them to conduct electricity quite well. And so they're free to move. They're allowed to conduct electricity. So let's describe how doping, a semiconductor, can change its electrical properties. So its electrical properties, in the case of a p-type and a n-type semiconductor, are changed because they increase the electricity flow or the electron flow. They increase the electron flow, and thereby they increase the current flow. And they do so by, in the case of the p-type semiconductor, by adding extra positive holes, which allows more electrons to flow. And in the case of the n-type semiconductor, the increased amount of co conduction electrons, which also amount, leads to a higher electron flow. Right, so both these n and p-type semiconductors increase electric properties by just having more electron flow or more positive holes being created, which increases current being produced. And what you should also know is usually when it comes to adding, how much we add, only about 0.0, .0, 0 .0 one percent is actually any of the either the group three or the group five elements. So vast majority will still be silicon or germanium, but a tiny bit of it, about zero point zero one percent, is the doping part which we add. But that will make a big difference. So that tiny bit makes a big difference in terms of how much electricity it can actually produce. There's one more quick thing I want to touch on as well, and that's what happens if we add an n-type and a p-type semiconductor together. Right? So this was our p-type semiconductor, a p-type on the top, and this was our n-type here. And what I drew here is these blue things are the positive holes, and the brown with the minus is just your charged negative ion. Right? This, is, this would be the normal part of the structure, and it's going to make more sense in a second. On the opposite side, we've got a charged positive ion and electron. And what I want you to know about both the P and the N type, if, if they're by themselves, these both these are neutral. What that means is the amount of negative and positive charge is the same. Even if boron has, for example, if a N type has more electrons than the normal one does, it still is overall, it's still neutral. It's still no charge. It's not charged, right? I mean, the amount of extra electrons equals the amount of extra protons, for example, in an N type. So overall, it's, it's neutral. But what happens if we bring them together? And this is interesting. All right, so if we bring them together, something different happens. And I'm going to show you that right now. So if we bring them together, what will happen is we're going to have this scenario happening. So right now, I'm just going to zoom in on what happens right here. Right, this part here is the same as this part here. Right, so you can see the squiggly line. That borderline is meant to be here, so it's meant to be cutting off. So these, this part belongs to the p-type. This part here is the p-type, and this part here is the n-type. And it's got these extra electrons here, the extra electrons here, and you've got the extra, the extra holes here. Right. At the moment, both these sides are neutral. So this is neutral, 
completely neutral charged and the other part was neutral as well. But what happens now that we've connected them is this extra electron here, right, so we've got the extra electron here, this extra electron will be attracted to this extra positive hole. It, want, it will want to fill this hole. And what, what it will do is we'll actually move to the other side and fill the hole. Right? So I'm going to remove this positive hole because it was recomb we call it recombined. So we say recombined. This electron recombined with this positive hole. So now you're going to find this original electron here and you're going to find no electron on the other side. Right, so this has lost its electron, and this has gained an electron. And now, it used to be neutrally charged. Now, this boron is actually negatively charged. Why? Because it has an extra electron. Right? This has, it used to have three electrons, now it has four electrons. So therefore, it has more electrons than protons. So now it's negatively charged. This part is negatively charged. And this part here, the phosphorus, used to have five electrons. Now it's lost one electron to the other side. Now it's positively charged. So beforehand, all of these were neutral. Now, not so much. Now, they're charged. So now, I'm on the top, I'm going to remove these blue dots because they've all, so in this case, what happened is the electrons always went over and filled these holes, which is why I'm removing both positive holes and the electrons because they got filled up. And now what's going to happen is we're going to have charged ions. These are all, these ones in the middle here, the ones in that circle, are charged ions. They're charged. And if you remember, if there's something that was just charged, what happens is a electrical field happens. The direction of the electrical field is from the positive to negative. Right? So the electrical field is from the positive to negative. So I'm going to draw the electrical field on top here. This is the direction of the electrical field. The electrical field. And the electrical field is defined, the direction of the electrical field is defined as what direction a positive charge would travel in. So a positive charge would be accelerated in this direction when it comes to the electrical field. The reason why is because now we have charged ions, and as soon as we have charged particles, then electrical field will be produced. And this happens in the depletion zone. I'm going to cover the actual charge or what, this, what the electrical field does when it comes to P and N type junctions, this is what we call a junction when they come together in the future. But this is really important because what this means now is these electrons, the, the remaining electrons here, won't be able to cross, they won't be able to actually move this way anymore. And the reason why is because this electrical field which was produced is going to actually propel them the opposite way, right? Because this electrical field is defines the direction of the positive charge. If we look at what direction the negative charge would travel in, which would be the example of electrons, and electrons would be propelled in the opposite direction. Right? So electrons would be propelled in this direction. So if these electrons are trying to cross the other side, they're going to be pushed back in the opposite direction, which means they can't, they can't cross. This is like no crossing zone anymore for the electrons, which means electricity can't flow anymore. Right? So this is going to be important very soon. But I'm just giving you a heads up. But you need to have a tiny bit of understanding of this kind of concept. What happens when we put the p-type and the n-type junction together? What happens? But um, hopefully the rest of the video was also somewhat useful. Thank you for watching.